Welcome to Intro to Logic. In this video, we'll be going over conjunctions. Conjunctions are what we call and sentences. So for example, consider the sentence, Bob and Tom eat pizza. This is a conjunction because it is technically two sentences conjoined with the word and. So for our first sentence, we have the sentence, Bob eats pizza. And for our second sentence, we have the sentence, Tom eats pizza. And notice that each of these sentences is called a conjunct. So we have the conjunct, Bob eats pizza, and the conjunct, Tom eats pizza. And the whole thing the sentence Bob and Tom eat pizza is technically the conjunction. So that's in a nutshell what we call a conjunction. Here's another example of a conjunction. The sentence Mary and Sue play soccer is a conjunction. And we know that because the word and conjoins two full sentences. We have the sentence and the conjunct, Mary plays soccer. And we have the other conjunct, Sue plays soccer. And these two sentences can be combined with the word and to make the sentence, Mary plays soccer and Sue plays soccer. Or in other words, Mary and Sue play soccer. Now that we have a better understanding of what a conjunction is, let's look at two rules that involve conjunctions. We'll be looking at the rule and introduction and the rule and elimination. According to and introduction, we can take any two premises and combine them to make an and sentence. So for example, if I have the premise P, as my first premise and Q as my second premise, I can combine P and Q with one, two, and introduction. And we'll be symbolizing the rule with an and sign, whether we choose an ampersand or the caret or the dot and the letter I. And so we have our first premise, our second premise, and according to and introduction, I can combine the two using the and sign. And notice how intuitive and introduction is. According to the rule, we can have any two premises on any line in our argument, and we can just combine them together to get an and sentence. So let's define P as I go to class, and Q as Joe goes to class. According to the and introduction rule, because I have the premise, I go to class, and the premise, Joe goes to class, we can conclude that I go to class and Joe goes to class. So there's really not much to this rule. It's very intuitive, and um, now you just have to get used to using it. According to and elimination, which is our second rule, having to do with conjunctions. We can take any single and sentence, like P and Q, and separate the two conjuncts. So if I start with one as my assumption, the conjunction P and Q, according to and elimination, I can take P away from line one, and I would write and elimination or and elimination, depending on how you want to symbolize the word and. And I can also take Q away from line one. I could take Q, one, and E. The rule and elimination is also very intuitive. Keep in mind that it just says if we have an and sentence, we can break up each of the conjuncts into its own premise. So if I have the sentence um, P equals Joe eats cake, and Q equals Joe eats ice cream. Prem 
premise one would be defined as Joe eats cake and ice cream. And according to and elimination, we can derive both P and Q on their own lines or their own premises. So we'd have one and E for both line two and three. And this would just mean that if I start with a conjunction like Joe eats cake and ice cream, I can conclude that Joe eats cake from this sentence. And I can also conclude that Joe eats ice cream. So this conjunction allowed us to infer each of the conjuncts and, and kind of create a premise for each of the conjuncts. And that's really all that the rule of and elimination lets us do. So as you can see, it's pretty intuitive and this will be a very helpful rule in the future. Now that we've learned about and introduction and and elimination, let's take a few moments to practice some practice problems. Consider the following sequence. Keep in mind that all of our assumptions or premises are to the left of the bracket and the conclusion is to the right of the bracket. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a scope line and then write our assumptions. We have P and Q. If Q, then R. And if not S, then not R. And our conclusion that we're trying to get to is S. So now that we have our assumptions, we have to ask ourselves, what can we do with these assumptions? And it looks like the first thing we can do is try breaking up our conjunction. Now you can break up each conjunct and write a new line, or you can just try to think which conjunct would be most helpful at this point in the argument. And it looks like Q is going to be the most helpful because we have a Q in line two that we can use. So let's do one and elimination. And now that we have Q as a premise, we can use that combined with line two to derive R, two, four, and that's with modus ponens. And now that we have an R, we notice that there's an R in line three, but it has a negation and it's in the consequent position of the conditional. So perhaps we can double negate R 5dn and use that double negation with line 3 to derive a double negated s through modus tollens. And now that we have not not s, we can derive s from that using double negation. Okay, so let's consider this example. Once again, we have our con uh, premises to the left of the bracket and our conclusion to the right of the bracket. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a scope line and write our assumptions. We have if not Q then not T, R and T, and if Q then S. And the conclusion we're trying to get to is S and not not R. All right, so the first thing we can do is once again, break up our conjunction. And we know that's a good option because we only have conditionals in our other premises, and so there's not a lot else we can do right now. So let's try breaking up each, um, the conjunction with each conjunct. So we have two and elimination, and we get R, and then we can also get the other conjunct T by two and elimination. So now that we have both R and T, we can ask ourselves if there's anything we can do with either of these. We know that R is really not useful right now because it's only located in premise two and that's where we just got R from. So what about T? If you look up at line one, there is a T in the consequent and it's negated. So if we do double negated T by five DN, we can use the negation of the consequent in the conditional on line one to derive the negation of the antecedent, and that's by modus tollens. So now we have not not q by one six mt. And now we have to ask ourselves, what can we do with this, if anything? And it turns out on line three, we have a conditional with q as the antecedent. 
And keep in mind that with double negation, we can derive Q from 7 dn. And now we can use Q and line 3 to derive S. So that would be 3, 9, no, 3, 8. Almost got the wrong number. Modus ponens. So now we have S. And we're trying to get to S and not not R. So where can we get not not R from? And we have R up here. So now we know that with R and the rule of double negation, we can derive not not R from R on line four. So lastly, our very last step is going to be combining both S and not not R with one of our new rules, the and introduction rule. So we have nine. 10 and introduction. And and introduction says if we have any two premises, we can combine them using the and sign. So we have S and we have not not R, and that's how we derive S and not not R. And there we have it. This has been an intro to logic video on the topic of conjunctions. Hopefully you have a better understanding of what a conjunction is and how to use the rules and introduction and and elimination. We'll see you next time.